Hello from Tetbury in the heart of Gloucestershire, where we're on the trail of the Jordan Codices. Tonight, these supposed ancient coded books are claimed to hold the key to the secrets of Christianity, but are they really what they seem? It seems to me absolutely certain that this document is a modern forgery of the last 10 or 20 years. Also tonight, the rise of food poverty in Bristol and one man's mission to combat it. There are people in Bristol that are currently going days without food. We were trying to create a situation where nobody in Bristol goes hungry. And the nature reserve in Somerset, sculpted by years of human intervention. I'm Alistair McKee, and this is Inside Out West. These tiny metal books might not look much, but their discovery made headlines across the globe. This could be the major discovery of Christian history. Uh, it could be the earliest Christian writing in existence, surviving almost... It's the most important archaeological find Approximately ever. 70 small volumes could then form the writing of the New Testament. They Sometimes. may contain contemporary accounts of the final years of Jesus. And at the heart of the media storm was this man, David Elkington, Gloucestershire's very own Indiana Jones, an adventuring scholar who with his wife brought the so-called Jordan Codices from the Middle East to the West Country. But the, the find is just too important really to disappear into private hands. Because of what, it, it's not about money then for you, it's about what these artifacts can tell us about early Christianity. Exactly. But can anyone really prove the truth about the Jordan Codices? We've discovered that not only could the Codices be fake, but that the man behind them is far from what he seems. David Elkington is a fantasist. He tells very exaggerated but believable stories. I'm as certain as it's possible to be that this entire body of codices are modern fakes. I'd stake my academic reputation on it. Israel. The codices first turned up here more than five years ago in the hands of this man, Hassan Saida. There have been widely varying accounts of how they came into his possession, but what is certain is he wanted to show them to experts in the West. And that's where David Elkington comes in. Uh, I'm an Egyptologist by training and um, historian, expert on linguistics, ancient and uh, not so modern. His biography on his agent's website makes his credentials clear. He claims to have trained under a curator of a leading archaeological museum and to have written a highly acclaimed academic thesis, as well as lecturing across the world. He seemed the right expert to give an objective opinion on these books. Accompanying David Elkington to Israel was supposed to be Robert Feather, an author and metals expert. But the two fell out over how Mr. Elkington wanted to exploit the find. I was asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement, um, really assigning all any rights I might have or anything I would uh, discover or write about to Elkington. And I refused to sign it on the basis I thought. If I'm going to sign anything, it would be directly with the owner, Hassan Saida. So I didn't sign it, and I was left out of that trip. But Robert decided to make his own way out to the Middle East to see the books for himself. He's brought back two codices, and he's agreed to show them on camera for the first time. This is a lead codex given to me by Hassan Saida, the owner, and it appears to have Hebrew and some Greek inscriptions, and there is very intriguing lettering on this one and on all of the ones I've seen. This is another one which is bronze, which has a figurehead on it, and again, it's, but this one is bound on three edges, so you cannot open it. It's effectively a sealed book. Robert is sceptical about claims the books are ancient Christian texts. It's very difficult to be dogmatic about these. 
Uh, there's an awful lot of them in existence. That I've seen at least 70 uh, different codices. My gut feeling is that these two are probably not genuine. They may be, but I doubt it. I would think they are probably, probably forgeries because the copper wire uh, binding the sheets together on this particular one is, is a little bit suspicious for me. The idea that they are early Christian documents, I think, is almost mm, negated. Robert is far from alone in his scepticism about David Elkington's claims. This is Dr. Peter Toneman, a lecturer in ancient history at Oxford University. In September 2010, uh, Mr. Elkington wrote to me out of the blue to ask whether I could give a professional opinion on some, what he called some lead and copper codices that had recently come, into his, uh, come to his knowledge. In particular, he wanted my opinion on a codex with an inscription in ancient Greek. That inscription told Dr. Toneman all he needed to know about the authenticity of the codex. And you can see at the bottom, this is ancient Greek script. Um, I'll translate roughly, um, without grief, farewell, abg. That's the first uh, three letters of the name abgar. Pretty meaningless in its own right. Um, in fact, this line has simply been copied from um, a funerary inscription, a tombstone of the early 2nd century AD, now on display in the Archaeological Museum in Amman in Jordan. It seems to me absolutely certain that this document is a modern forgery of the last 10 or 20 years or so. Mr. Elkington accepted Dr. Toneman's opinion that one codex was fake, but insists others in the collection could still be authentic. Six months later, he was showing off the codices to the world. These are the most important archaeological artifacts found probably in the history of Christianity. I was very surprised to see these things reappearing. All of the codices that have appeared in the media over the last year or so are products of the same modern workshop. They have all sorts of similarities in style, fabric and content. Um, it seems to me absolutely certain that every one of these documents is a modern fake. Well, let's uh, get the samples done and let's get to work. David Elkington insists Dr. Toneman is wrong. He says tests have shown the lead used in the codices is old and that he has a team of international experts carrying out further work. But he would only tell us the names of two academics currently advising him. Emeritus Professor Philip Davis of Sheffield University declined to take part in the film. Biblical scholar Margaret Barker said she would only talk to us if we didn't edit her interview in any way. We declined the offer. Mr. Elkington's team may be small, but a wider body of academics have called for further tests on their authenticity to be carried out. Meanwhile, David Elkington has continued to press his claims, and the resulting media coverage contained incidents worthy of the Raiders of the Lost Ark, cryptic warnings, and even shots fired at him while in Jordan. He's even had to come into hiding here in the Gloucestershire countryside because of alleged death threats from those wanting to keep the Jordan codices to themselves. Mr. Elkington is now planning to release a book on the codices called Divine Revelation and hopes to make a film. In the meantime, he's using the codices to raise money to support him in his work. He even made a direct appeal on American radio. What I would like to say to your, your audience as well is that the team and I are actually looking for sponsorship um, to help the Jordanians to excavate and to determine more from this site. We now need to get cracking on this, and I'm afraid to say that analysis and scholarship it costs not only in time but also in money. It would be well worth the investment because what is there is extremely important for our understanding not only of Christianity, but it's very, very important for humanity in general. But is David Elkington the right man to be testing the truth of the codices? We've discovered that a lot of David Elkington's claims about his own credentials simply don't stack up. He's not a high-flying academic and has no recognised qualifications in the field. And the woman he said he trained under was not a museum curator. The British School of Egyptology was not much more than a club for enthusiastic amateurs. And his highly acclaimed academic thesis is in fact a self-published book that sold poorly. 
He ended up splitting from his writing partner, who took him to the small claims court over a £5,000 debt. And over the years, he's taken thousands of pounds as investment to make a film based on his theories, a project he says is now on hold. One person who knows about David Elkington's habit of embellishing the truth is Edward Lawrence, his estranged son from a former relationship. Mr. Elkington has had little contact with his son, but they have met up over the years. He's a very, very good storyteller. He said to me that he was studying for a doctorate at Oxford University. And he also said that I was a, um, I think it's a Maori prince uh, of some, some tribe in New Zealand. Okay, and, um, Although he knew his father liked a good story, Edward was amazed when he turned up on the news. I didn't know what to think at first when I saw my father all over the media with these codices. It was a bit of a shock at first. Not just him claiming to be an archaeologist, but also the press coverage that embraced him, that supported him almost. I mean, obviously, press has to remain impartial, but it was a sensationalized story. And, I mean, it, it, in, in terms of him, it, it, it did very well for him. We know David Elkington has managed to raise financial backing from wealthy supporters impressed by his claims, including this woman, Princess Elizabeth of Yugoslavia. They've now fallen out and she no longer believes the codices are real. She loaned David Elkington tens of thousands of pounds. Whether her investment will ever pay off remains to be seen. The Israel Antiquities Authority has expressed doubt over the codices' authenticity. The Jordanian government is still due to make an official announcement. Hassan Saida, the current holder of the codices, says he has not allowed David Elkington any further access to the collection. We wanted to speak to Mr Elkington about his background and about his current work with the codices, but he declined to appear on camera. In a statement, he told us he has... ...had to make it clear on several occasions that I was neither Dr nor Professor Elkington, but plain Mr. I'm not a descendant of a Maori prince, however, my family is connected to the Maori tribes of the same name. I acknowledge a small personal debt owed to Princess Elizabeth, which has never been disputed and will be paid back in full. I have never claimed to have had any formal qualification and have been largely self-taught, and I've always been upfront about this. For now then, it seems David Elkington's role in the secrets of the Jordan Codices is only going to add to the mystery. While David Elkington continues to push the idea that these are incredibly important uh, early Christian documents, then the speculation will be rife and the story will go on and on.